Hi everybody. Back on the BenQ W6000 that was sent in, uh, BenQ had claimed that our lamp had damaged it. I was skeptical because among the rest of their claims was that the lamp had damaged the ballast and that the lamp had damaged a lens and that the lamp had damaged the upper casing, which was really strange. So I wasn't really convinced, neither was the customer. So the customer opted to send it in for me to look at. And when it arrived, it had this bag with two of these fellows and two little screws in it. So I thought, hmm, somebody must have snapped the case, something like that. So, you know, that happens sometimes. But, you know, we all know that a, a lamp that goes in here isn't going to cause a problem with the case up here unless something goes catastrophically wrong and it explodes or something like that. So anyway, let me uh, grab the top and let me show you what I found there. Here's the top case. This goes, hold that button pad here. This sits on top, has your power buttons and everything. <clears throat> Pardon me. And the way these are put together, it's a little bit of a puzzle to get it apart. You have to actually remove the shroud that goes here. And the way you get that shroud off is you actually remove the, the focus and zoom rings. They um, do like a little turn. They latch on to these, these little screws here. So once I took that off and I took the, the bezel off, I, I know these are a little bit of a trick to get into, so I take my time. I took the top off, and the first thing I saw was that. That was obviously broken by force. Then I also saw a snapped off socket here, uh, screw socket, uh, whatever the technical name is, the part that, hold, that the screw goes into. You can see the shear line where it was. And that was in this bag. That one was included. And I could tell it went there because of the pattern on the plastic. You could see, let me see if I can get this, yeah. You can see the way that broke off, that's the bottom. So you can kinda imagine that it would line up with where it broke off from. So once I found where this one went, glued it back on, seems fine, nice and straight. Decided to find where this one came from. Well, at a cursory glance, you'd expect here, because it's the other broken spot. But if you look carefully, and a lot of people probably see it already, it can't be from there, because part of the plastic is still there. That insert would have been seated in here. And there's no other places where it's missing. Those two are in place, that one's in place, this one's in place. And those are the only spots where the screws go into the upper case. So they wanted to replace the entire upper case, claiming that the lamp had caused this to happen. I don't buy it. In fact, nobody really buys it. What I suspect is that piece there came out of another case, and they were going to use that to tell the customer all the things that were broken. Now, I'm not going to point any fingers, but this damage corresponds with that damage right there somebody pulled that case up too hard and didn't have that screw out and they literally ripped the plastic apart this isn't usable anymore technically this whole bottom would have to be replaced fortunately it's not critical so going without it won't be a problem it should look kind of like that because that would then correspond with this. That's what it would look like when it was installed, except that would obviously be attached to this upper case. So this, I have no idea where it came from. It didn't come out of this projector. I am 99.999% sure about that. Never want to say 100 because, you know, never know. But I'll be sending that back to the customer. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little test run on the projector. It's fully reassembled. 
Uh, at least down here all the uh, innards are reassembled. Color wheels connected, color wheel sensor. This is the iris control for the stepper motor for the iris. This is a temperature sensor. Let's see. Uh, no, that's the index position sensor on the iris. So that tells the iris when it's open and closed or where it is. That makes the iris open and close. That flat cable, flat flex, that spins the color wheel. And this wire here tells the color wheel where it's at. Then we have a fan. This fan right here. We have the keyboard cable. Goes up to the keyboard. We have the power supply cable. This brings the low voltage up from the power supply to the main board. We have another fan. And I believe that's it. Not a whole lot of connections. Then there's a, a, a through board connection under here that goes into the DLP chip. Oh, another thing actually I want to point out. Since this has the adjustable lens where you can move its position with this joystick here, I did find that these two screws were quite loose. Now this is supposed to have some play. There's a spring behind there. And that spring is what keeps that metal tight so that the lens doesn't flop back and forth. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't tilt this way. It just moves up and down as it should or side to side so that you can get it set up right. So I tighten those up. Just thought that was strange and I wonder if that had anything to do with their claim of a lens being damaged by the lamp. The lens I was expecting to see damage would be one in here, but there was nothing wrong in here. No evidence of overheating, not even any evidence of dust. The projector was kept pretty clean. The customer took pretty good care of it. It is a refurb, though. I did find a sticker on the bottom that says it was a refurb. So it did have a problem at one point, and that was repaired. And I suspect that's when either this damage happened or that damage happened when it was at BenQ before it came to us. So, I'm going to install the lamp, and uh, we're going to see what happens. I'm going to see if I can do this one-handed. might not be too hard. Yep, one screw fell out. Let's see, we'll put this one. This is really difficult to do one-handed. Focus that a little. In fact, I am only going to put one screw in because this is just a test. I'm going to have to take the lamp back out. And then the access door. I have to put that on because that hole lines up with this pin. And there is a switch. Yep that that pin hits to allow the main power to come on. So I gotta put this on. And that I will need two hands for because I have to hold it while I put the screws in, so stand by. Okay, the lamp is installed. Looks good. We will plug in the 120 volts and we should get some standby lights. Let's see, I'll turn this light off above me. Make it a little easier to see. And indeed, there it is. We have a standby light. So now we just need to find power, which I think I'm going to guess is here. Yep. So the color wheel should spin up any second. There's the iris. There's the color wheel. The lamp has ignited. That buzzing you hear, that's the iris moving. And the light's going through the color wheel, through the light tunnel, into that lens. Across the DLP chip, and back out through this lens.
And it should be Shining BenQ on my hand. There it is. Actually, it's probably saying no signal. But that tells me that the projector is functioning right now. Everything is plugged back in properly. The fans are happy. I do see a little bit of light leakage here, but that's normal. Got that blower fan underneath that just came on. So this is good. What I'm going to do next is uh, turn it off, let it cool down, and then put the top case on, put the keyboard back in the top case, put it fully back together, and then I'm going to run it again, and this time I'll cook it for yeah, a couple hours, you know, five, ten hours. I'm going to make sure it's nice and stable, and I'll be monitoring the temperature of the uh, lamp exhaust so that we make sure it's not running too hot. So, there we go. I'll be back with more info on this W6000. Thanks for watching.